Yeah. I'm cool with that stoppage. I'm surprised it wasn't uh, uglier. Good for him. I had some concerns about uh, Tiafimo coming into this fight. Um, because basically he's been talking, you know, like he's got some issues going on. Uh, he's been out of the ring for what? Uh, nine months. And then they said uh, one fight in the last 22 months. Back with top rank after his last fight being on the zone against uh, George Cambosos due to um, some purse bid issues. Lord, that state athletic commission woman is something else. Anyway, um, in T-Street Controversy with Fight View 360, there's T.O. Sr. So, I mean, he looked good. He looked good. He showed, like, all the pieces to the puzzle. Um, however, my concern is... Uh, there's a stoppage. Well, that was the knockdown leading to the stoppage. A stiff jab put him down. Like, you know, we we saw we we saw the best of TO, you know, in regards to like what he has to offer. <clears throat> um, body shots, great jab. Uh the power is clearly still there. You know, he didn't look tired or gassed out. And Pedro Campa, he's gonna get some more work. Because he put on a nice little uh, performance, you know, when he was able to get Tiafimo on the ropes. But one thing I did say is that he's got really, really heavy feet, you know, and I'm surprised that he didn't get knocked out even uglier, if we're really, really being honest. But now I want to hear what Tiafimo has to say. My personal opinion, <clears throat> I think that, you know, um, it's going to be Barboza. Top rank seems to be really, really building up that fight. Either Barboza. Or go to WBC route, you know, whatever's going to happen between um, who is this supposed to be? Uh, Jose Zapata and um, Regis Progre. You can go that route. The IBF is pretty much, you know, Josh Taylor's going to be basically vacating that sometime soon. Um, the WBC, remember, Josh Taylor was the undisputed champion, but the WBC and the WBA has been vacated. And it's likely because he can travel. You're going to have Bakhtir Akhmedov. Taking on, um, who's he fighting again? Well, let's listen to the particulars. Junior welterweight champion, the takeover. Tiafimo Lopez. He has said this week he loves the growing, the teaching, the pain, the hard. Hey, let's turn that down. Married. But I wasn't. We'll listen to his post-fight interview, but. Um, Jeremiah's point saying Sabriel Matias will likely be for that vacant IBF title. Alberto Puglio and Bakhtir Akhmedov, their fight for the vacant WBA on the undercard of uh, Adrian Broner and um, Omar Figueroa next weekend. It's the 13th right now. Go ahead, do the flip, man. Do the flip. Do the flip. There we go. All right. <laughs> Great landing. Uh, Zapata and Regis Progre are going to be fighting or ordered by the WBC to fight. Somebody told me that Jose Ramirez is getting married. So basically, he's out of the running for the WBC uh, right now. Um, these two belts are vacant. This third one's about to be vacant. Josh Taylor, the champion, is um, uh, rumored to be fighting Jack Catterall again next. Liam Paro is going to be taking on Brock Jarvis. Liam Paro is ranked number one. So whoever wins between Arnold Barboza and Tiafimo Lopez and maybe Jose Ramirez, you know, some mixture right there will be the WBO mandatory. So he has options and, and, and 140 is stacked, especially when you think about the guys that are coming to 140 eventually, like Devin Haney, um, likely after he beats Cambosos and when he fights Loma, win or loss, he's going to be, um, um, that's the rumor, is that Devin Haney may be fighting Loma, but also Loma is also linked to Shakur Stevenson as well. But 140 is pretty deep, you know, and it's going to be even deeper when those guys from 135 move up. But let's go on a little um, 
uh, jump cut because I'm going to listen to Teofimo's uh, post-fight interview. Thank you for taking your time out, liking the video, and subscribing. Um, apologies the last couple of weeks if I haven't done a live stream during the main events. I'm on this. Um, I'm on the snack program by uh, Victor Conti. I'm taking that stuff, and um, I'm in the gym 90 minutes a day, every day. Uh, 2,500 calories. So it's like I need my naps to be able to stay up this late. You know, like you dig me, my legs are on fire. You know, stiff and on fire, all this running and shit. But yeah, let's take a jump cut. Um, listen to the post fight interview. Follow me on Twitter at T-Street Controversy. Also, my podcast is finally here. Um, the first episode, Canelo versus Golovkin 3 preview, you can uh, find on your podcast listening platforms. You know, Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher, etc. Just look up the uh, Fight View 360 boxing podcast or just Fight View 360 on your uh, listening platforms. All right, jump cut. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Mm. Oh, they went on commercial break. We weren't supposed to see that. Hey, let me uh, go on one more uh, jump cut so they come back. The take back just took what was his with the TKO oh, sure. victory. Let's go to the ring to Bernardo. Teofimo, today it was about the take back. You started to have fun in there. Walk me through what it felt like to get a win tonight. First and foremost, I dedicate this fight to the Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty God, Son of God. Thank you for all that you have done, the countless blessings that you continue to bestow upon all of us in this room. He's Honestly, talking about Jesus. A blessing, man. I, I, God has blessed me with a gift, and I have a voice to talk to everyone in this room. I want to thank each and every one of you guys, each and every one of you that are here. Thank you for your time. Time is something we don't get back. I love you all so very much. Thank you, guys. You have created in me something so much more than I needed. And for that, I'm forever grateful for all of you. I am grateful for all of this, man, the return. I told y'all, though, don't call this a comeback. This is the takeover takeover. All right. Now, 140 pounds is different than 135. Describe that, describe that difference and who you want next. Like I said, you know, look, uh, we've, been at that, we've been at 135 for about nine years. It was killing my body since I was a teenage kid, man. Look, I'm, I just turned 25, and we want Josh Taylor. We want these guys. We want pro grades. We want, we want St. Peter. We want all the belts. That's really who we want. We want to become a two-time undisputed world champion. You also invited Oscar De La Hoya to be here ringside. He represents Ryan Garcia. Is that a fight that you see in your future? Listen, if, if Josh Taylor is too busy with his wedding, and there's nobody else around because the WBA belt is, is taken and the WBC is going to be fit, uh, fight. It's going to be fought against say Peta and uh, Pograis. Then so fucking be it. Ooh. I'll take I'll take all them boys and take their whole dreams away. I'm here to be their nightmare. We do apologize for the language here. Now you were healthy tonight, and we know that you leave the ring. I'm healthy. exhausted. Heisman night. Historically has been your night. Is that when we expect to see you back in the ring? Hey, I need everybody to come out. We're going to be in the big room this time. Madison Square Garden, December 10th. Heisman Trophy night on ESPN. Pay-per-view. Let's get it, baby. I'm ready to eat all these boys. They all man-made. Teofimo is self-made. They can never Pay -per -view? make another one. December right. the 10th? Yo, everything is ready then for Heisman Trophy. What's he talking night. about? Of Teofimo Lopez in What's he talking about? What is this mess? Oh yeah, muchas gracias. Así es, el griego catracho. Viva México también. Andale way. Back to you, my friend. Don't they got. I wonder, if, I wonder if they got somebody already booked for him. Why do you say pay per view? But at the same time, he did say he was um a five time champion pounds, the first and the greatest of all not all time. By the way, it was uh thirty five hundred or so there. You know, his marketability, like, really kind of went down. I still can't believe he lost to George Cambosos, if I'm being honest. No disrespect to George Cambosos, but I can't believe Tiafimo lost to him. I understand he may have had some shit going on outside the ring. And then, of course, the uh, esophagus, you know, um, I believe he had surgery on his hand and elbow or something like that. You know, but, you know, and going through some shit outside the ring with his wife. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. But I'm going to be interested in who's going to fight next. By the way, I'm going to be doing an in-depth recap this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern 
on the channel live stream this Tuesday. What's going to be Tuesday? What? Um, the 16th, 6 p.m. Also, I'm going to be releasing my uh, podcast on this fight um, on Monday as well. Tuesday, I believe I'm going to be releasing it. But we're going to get a consistent schedule. But I am exhausted, guys. I apologize. We're going to go into more detail, you know, in some other videos. But I got to get the hell away from this computer. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I am T-Street Controversy with Fight View 360.